Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my sunless tanning fake tan video. <laughs> it really hard to believe that I've never filmed a full-on dedicated video to how I sunless tan, the products that I use, tips and tricks and all that good stuff, but I haven't. Um, I've let you guys know in like vlogs what products I use and things like that, but I've never filmed like an entire video dedicated to my sunless tanning routine and I've gotten actually a couple of comments recently asking to show it, so I figured we'll have it here in case anyone else wants to look back on it. So. Let's get started. I'm gonna do a little bit of a demo, but most of it's going to be talk through, obviously, to like has no tips and tricks and the products that I use. So first things first, my first tip, as well as like a trick, I guess, um, is I like to actually, first of all, let me preface this, I don't do this every single, this routine every single time I tan. This is if I want like a perfect tan and I've got time to do it all. Um, and I'll show you my easy hacks as well, but I like to shower and shave um, and exfoliate and everything the day before I tan. So what I will do is I will do a full exfoliation of my body in the shower. Now, if you have sensitive skin, shaving is actually a form of exfoliation. So you could skip the exfoliation on your legs and just go to shaving if you get bumps on your legs or anything like that, because that can really affect how the tan lays on your body. So if you're finding that that's the issue, try like skipping the exfoliator and going in with just shaving. I find that I like both. My skin's pretty tough, but if you have bumpy, sensitive skin, just do a razor that's enough exfoliation for the tan to really cling on to the skin. So that's my first trick, um, that, or that's another trick, but making sure you do it the day before is going to ensure that the hair follicle like closes back up a little bit. Technically, like shaving and exfoliating can really like I don't know, just make my pores more open, I feel like, and I know pores don't technically open and close, but I just find that that's the case. So if I let my shaved skin and exfoliated skin rest a day, I find that I just have better results. So I will shave, shower, and exfoliate, typically wash my hair as well, on that day before. So for exfoliators in the shower, you can use multitudes of different things, whatever works best for you, but I thought I would share with you some of my favorites. So the first one is going to be a completely physical exfoliator, and this, I've used up. Um, this is the Shea Sugar Scrub by Tree Hut. I've used this since I was in college. Love this stuff. Any scent doesn't really matter. They're all just good. It's a sugar scrub. It's pretty abrasive though, um, but I find that my body really likes it and I have good luck with it. So this is one of my favorites. Super affordable. You can get it at Amazon, Ulta, Target, Walmart, whatever. If you're looking for more of like a gentler or let's say you just have overly... Um, I don't know what I want to say, just like overly sensitive skin that doesn't like like rough abrasion, you can do a chemical exfoliator. So what I mean by chemical is it has some sort of AHA in it, which kind of helps to slough off the skin, but also has a physical exfoliator in it as well. And I have two. Um, the first one is sold out. This is the Tula. This one's more gentle. This is their Take Care and Polish. Um, this has, I want to say, sorry, AHAs, yeah, AHAs as well as um, lemon peel, hibiscus flower, but it also is a scrub as well, like physical and chemical. And then this one is no joke. This one's harsh, but if you have KP or anything like that, suffer from ingrown hairs on your um, thighs or anything like that, this is gonna be great. This has 10% AHA, but it also has like a physical exfoliator in it as well. It says it's good for sensitive skin, but this stuff is no joke. This will take off every layer of my skin and it does make me feel dry, but I feel like it's good for anybody who suffers from um, like, those ingrown hairs or anything like that. This stuff's amazing. I've had this forever. I've bought multiple bottles of it. It's the First Aid Beauty Bumper Razor. Super good. Um, so those are ideas for a chemical and physical exfoliator. Um, if you're looking for something a bit more gentle, this can be a little bit more gentle. Another exfoliator, if you just want to be more eco-friendly, don't want to buy products, want to add more to your shower or routine, get one of these exfoliating mitts. These last forever, honestly. Uh, I mean, you, you can replace them every once in a while, but they really don't wear off. I love these. This one is by Derm... Dermasuri? Dermasuri? Whatever. Uh, I got this off Amazon, and I absolutely love it. You just put whatever soap you want on it, and it is a scrubby little mitt. 
this is awesome eco-friendly obviously amazing and yeah this is a good option as well so the, i just rotate between whichever works best for me whatever i'm feeling like my body needs if i have a lot of exfol or a lot of um like sunless tanner on already and i'm trying to get rid of that or if i'm really dry i will just do whatever my body needs at that moment i always exfoliate before i shave the razor that i just recently picked up and i absolutely love is the harry's razor in case you're curious and wondering this is the one i use i picked it up at target and i love it so that's the razor that i use and then over that next like night or day i put on a super hydrating cream um whichever one works best for you i absolutely love the trader joe's body butter coconut body butter it's not super coconutty it's so hydrating but it also doesn't sit on my skin like an oil um because i find oily cleanse or oily lotions just kind of don't hydrate my skin as much um and moisturize my skin so i like this it's a good mix it does have oils in it but overall i just love this stuff so i will smother my body with that but whatever hydrating super hydrating moisturizing body cream you have place that on after you've shaved exfoliated your fresh skin um it's super important to do this on hydrated skin so that's why i do it the night before and then I shower and make sure that I have a full clean canvas before the actual night of my tan. I do tan at night. I find that that's just what works best for me and I enjoy it. So I will shower right before then to rinse off any body oil uh, or any of the remaining oils, any body oil that you might have. Um, and then just make sure that your skin's super squeaky clean. I don't exfoliate again or I don't shave again, just rinsing off, okay? Then I go ahead and get into my tanning steps. So. Again, get out of the shower, dry. get all nice and dry, and then I go in with my body butter on the areas that I find that I cling to. So making sure my wrists, my hands, my elbows, my knees, my feet are a place that I just constantly struggle with. So I make sure that I put lotion on all of that, and then I actually let that sit for a while, and then I go back again and do it right before I tan. So I'll put my initial layer again. If you don't have time for all this, you don't need to. These are just like the perfect tan tips. So keep that in mind. So then I go in and do it one more time before I'm about to put on my thing. I just, or my tanner, I go ahead and just hit the elbows, the wrists, the knees, and the feet one last time because I feel like the first layer just sinks into the skin and the second layer creates a barrier. So you're still going to receive a tan on any place that you put um, tanner. The lotion just helps from like, creating like a blockage of slower penetration and I feel like not as much maximum like color if that makes sense it doesn't saturate the color just as like deep but it still lets color through so keep that in mind you still need to rinse off your hands and things like that even if you have lotion on because color is still going to penetrate through this lotion but not as deep and dark and all that good stuff so that's why I use a lotion over my feet and legs. And I don't actually stop at just bringing the lotion. My second round of lotion, I also apply to my like lower shins and calves. I tend to get those little like dots of darkness wherever I have a hair follicle. Um, so I tend to put lotion up there as well because I just find that it also makes for a more gradual like tan from my leg to my foot since my foot is completely lotioned and has less color on it or else I look crazy um so I put it on those little areas so if you know what I'm talking about where those like where your hair follicles come out it can look like black or dark spotted um spots you know what I mean so I like to put lotion where I have those sort of pitting marks um and it helps reduce those also the other key is to take and rub your your self tanner down the leg instead of up the leg if you go up the leg you're pushing it into that follicle if you go with the grain of the hair you're going against it or you're going to push it on top instead of pushing it inside so i find that really helps let's speak of tanner and let's talk about mitts so this mitt i actually received with the josie moran um tanning oil but nonetheless i use it with every other tanner I've ever used. I love it because it's velvet and you can get velvet um, tanning mitts anywhere, all over Amazon. I will link one similar. You don't have to buy this kit. I love that it is rubberized in the inside so it makes me feel really protected and it's just a velvet on the outside. Now, this does tend to soak up a little bit of product but nothing where I'm like too much where I would use rubber gloves or anything like that because I do find that the velvet helps just make sure that everything is buffed in 
beautifully. So if you do not have a velvet and you're using one of those sponges or you're using your hands or you're using rubber gloves, try one of these. I swear you will notice a difference in how the smoothness of your tan is. And then <laughs> the tanner that I do use is the Loving Tan 2 Hour Express Deluxe Bronzing Mousse in Dark. I know it says you can only leave, you can choose to leave it on for two hours. I leave it on overnight. It gives me the darkest results I find if I only leave it on for two hours or half the day. I end up with streaks because I'm just not cognizant of my sweat, water that I touch, anything like that. So I just do it at night because it's easy. I wake up shower and you're good to go but this is what i've used i've used this for years now you guys probably five six years and years, years. i've tried saint tropez i've tried drugstore i've tried i've tried it all and i just really enjoy this one you can get this on amazon it's got a really good color base to it i almost find that it's the green tanning bases to me like i believe saint tropez does a green it doesn't look good on my skin tone this almost has a red undertone which i find gives you that mimic of a sunburn almost in a not i don't not in a bad way but it has that red undertone which i find is a much more natural tan for me it's not orange it's more red and it's not green and i find that it looks best on my skin tone but again depending on your skin tone and your undertones and all that it's going to depict which tanner looks the best on you i find this formula really nice it does transfer on clothes it doesn't stain my bed sheets i can wash it off but i do sleep in like a full-on bodysuit like long sleeve pants all the things um but like i said you can wear it through the day but i personally just don't like that feeling or the smell or anything like that so I just do it at night so they just did come out with a darker one but honestly this is perfect for me year-round do I tan year-round no do I love to tan sunless tan yes so I always have a case of it or like a container of it and I can apply it I don't do a ton during the winter just because I don't like to look like ridiculously fake with it but you can if that's what you want to do um but I use it a lot during like the summer spring fall months to kind of transition out of it and whenever I just need a boost I find that tanner just boosts my mood my like I don't know I just find it now not everybody does some people love light white skin um and that's cool too whatever works for you these are just my tips and tricks um but yeah, so I sleep in this and I find that it works really well when I sleep in it. So I take and apply this to my mitt and then I rub down the legs against or with the grain of the hair. I find that that just works best for me in avoiding those little pitted spots. And then I go ahead and just apply it to the rest of my body. Um, this does have a color guard to it already so keep that in mind you're going to appear dark when you first apply it which is nice you know where it's going um and you can tend to get sort of streaks and things like that while you're applying it but honestly it goes away it washes away it's just that top layer that gives a little bit more color if you've gone over an area more than once you might end up with streaks but you do not see that as long as you apply it everywhere once you rinse it off so i find it very forgiving I do just put this on my back like this. I don't have an issue. Apparently I have really long arms for reaching my back, but they do have those little like things. If you have an issue reaching your back, nonetheless, start from the bottom of your body and work your way up. Because if you've done this whole top layer and then you're bending over with all that stomach rolls and all that good stuff, like it's just going to smush and just not look good. You're going to end up with lines and streaks. So start from the bottom of your tanner and then work your way up. So once I've applied the tanner to my lower body um, and before I go in with the upper body, I go in with my face. So first key is if you have any sort of dark spots that are age spots or melasma or anything like that, I don't know why, but I find that my tanner will stick to those spots and make them darker. So I do my mustache. I have a dark spot over here and I have some melasma in my like T-zone in my um eyebrow areas so i will go ahead and apply lotion to those first again it's just gonna help create a barrier it's still going to tan you you're not gonna look like crazy white in those patches by any means it just kind of helps not let it soak in too much and create dark spots darker so if you have any of those issues try that tip first second if you're not using a kabuki brush for your face tanner you need to i pump a pump into my mitt and then i go ahead and dab it in with this brush it off on the side and just buff it in where i would apply my bronzer i do that 3e e motion right forehead cheekbones jawline down the neck 
ears, all that good stuff, and down the sides of my nose, and then on top of my nose, and then I just kind of blot everywhere else. I find that it just gives a much more natural look to my skin than applying those drops into my moisturizer. Um, I just prefer to do it that way. This way is to just kind of put it where I want to put it. It Tanner on your face wears off so fast anyways because you're constantly, if you're exfoliating um, and you're washing your face a lot, then you're it's not going to last very long. So I find that I like this. It gives my face more definition, which looks really nice. It's a great trick if you want to wear less foundation. Um, yeah, I absolutely love this hack. So I will go ahead and apply it on my face. Then I will go into my feet. So I just go ahead again, do the same trick and rub down my feet and all that kind of stuff in between the toes. I like that stuff. A brush just works better than a mitt. I find gives it more of a natural airbrush glow to it. Then I go ahead and apply it to the rest of my body. And then I take the same brush. I do it in this order. Not that it really matters because I clean it every time and my body is clean anyways. But then I go ahead and I dab into my armpits um, so that I don't have super white armpits. Um, I don't have any deodorant on at this time. I have nothing on my body. So it's not like deodorant's getting on your face. It's, it's not that big of a deal. But just for hygienic purposes, that's what I do. I dab it on my armpits. I do my wrists and my hands and all that good stuff. Um, and that's it. That's how I do my tanner. If you're not using a kabuki brush, like I said, it's the perfect way to kind of get those areas that you find can be a little difficult um, and look a little streaky. Try a brush, obviously. I don't think that's anything new, but if you haven't tried it, try it. Um, and then let's go into maintenance. So on average, I would say ideally I would love to tan once a week. That does not always happen. It's more like once every two weeks or whatnot. But to maintain my tan, I love a tanning butter. This is a newer one to me. I used to love the Isle of Paradise one, but they no longer sell the one that I loved. So I have not tried the other one, um, but it doesn't have as great of reviews. And this one is good. I really like it. So this is the Tan Lux Tan Butter Illuminating Tan Butter. Basically a gradual tanner, nothing crazy. You need to put lotion on every single day anyways, because it's just good for your body, but also it helps long, along, elongate? elongate makes your tan last longer essentially basically tan is just sitting on those top dead layers of skin so it sloughs off and if your skin is not hydrated it's going to slough off in a very uneven way so putting on a tanner that also helps keep your tan and just hydrate your skin love that if you don't want something like this you don't want to spend the money on a tanning butter. I did get this on like HSN or QVC, so it was on sale, it wasn't that big of a deal, but um, if you're not looking for something like that and you already have a lotion that you absolutely love, get something like this, tanning drops. These are the Isle of Paradise. Um, Tan Lux also has some, they're much more expensive, but this will do as well. I do not like using this as like my all over tan. I like using this as like a, a maintenance product, if that makes sense. So I just take this, oh my God, I'm literally, like out of this. I didn't even realize. I have like a little bit left. Um, I take this and it's in a dropper form. It's like a gel, like literally nothing left. I can't even get to it. I don't know why I kept this. Oh, there we go. Um, you take this and you just drop it into your lotion and you can create how dark you want to go. So yes, you can use it for an all over body, but I just find that it's overpriced and I go through it really fast if I do it that way but I will like using it to mix in with a lotion that I already use and love so you can go with this route which is affordable way more affordable than this route um but it just depends on ease and convenience and this has a glow to it so it's really pretty and I like it and I find that it soaks into the skin really well um but yeah, I think that's it, you guys. And just maintenance, I just make sure that I'm using a hydrating body wash and I'm putting on lotion every day after I get out of the shower, whether it's something that has color in it, something plain, or adding tanner to a lotion. Those are all of my tips and tricks um, to avoid tanning mistakes and whatnot. Uh, a proper routine is key. Obviously, hydration, exfoliation, all the good stuff and then just having really good products so i hope you guys enjoyed if you did let me know by giving this video a thumbs up let me know in the comments down below what your favorite tanner is if it's not this maybe i need to try some new ones but i hope you guys found this video helpful and useful as a resource and tool along your self tanning fake tanning sunless tanning i don't even know what it's called anymore routine and journey i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you all in my next video bye you guys